Something that's very important in business is social proof. It's one of the biggest disadvantages we at Kogan have over bricks and mortar stores. Bricks and mortar stores have social proof on their side. When you walk into a store and you see people lined up at the cash register, your brain's automatically telling you, hang on a second, other people have evaluated this store, they thought it's trustworthy, it's okay to make a purchase here. Other people have evaluated the prices, they think it's all all right. You know, these subconscious things happen. People would always rather use someone else's brain than their own brain. When you walk past two cafes, if one's crowded, the other one's not, you'll go into the crowded one. Even if their coffee's shitter and their prices are higher, you'll still go to the more crowded one. So social proof in a business is very important and you can't underestimate the importance of it. That's why on our website in the bottom left hand corner you'll see that pop up. A live actual feed of people making purchases around you. The internet can be a lonely place. So on a website, we're trying to explain to people there are other people on this site right now. There are other people who have evaluated this site and chosen to buy from this site. And the power of social proof is amazing. I fly from Melbourne to Sydney pretty often, a few times a week. And the flight that I usually get out of Sydney into Melbourne, QF439, <laughs> gets into gate three at Melbourne Airport. Now you know from gate three you walk out, you turn left, you're a baggage claim. On this particular day, just as the plane lands, I get a phone call, and it was an important call, so I'm pretty involved in the call. We get off the plane, I was the first person off the flight, and I'm talking on the phone, and I turn left, and I keep walking. The conversation finishes, I hang up, I look up, and I see that I'm at gate 12. The plane had got into a different gate, and I turned in the wrong direction. So I'm like, oh shit, all right, got to walk back. I turn around to walk back to baggage claim, and what do I see? 200 people that followed me off the flight. <laughs> Not a single person had bothered to use their own brain. <laughs> and mine was no good to them at that stage. Another quick example of the importance of social proof. Quite a few years ago, I was in China and they'd finally made remote control helicopters that were affordable. They found a way to mass produce them. I could land a remote con control helicopter in Australia for pretty cheap. Christmas was coming up and I thought, all right, let's order a couple of containers of these bad boys, set up a, sh a stall at a shopping center and this will be massive. 19 bucks for a remote control helicopter, who could say no to that? So I negotiated a lease with a shopping center for one of those stalls in the middle and I had it from November 24 to December 24. And then the containers arrived, November 24 I set up, I set up the remote control helicopters, 19 bucks each, I'm selling them, I had 10,000 of these things. And nobody's buying. Day one I sell like two or three. Day two I sell two or three. I'm thinking, damn, I've got like 750 years worth of Christmas presents here if I don't get rid of these things. Nobody's buying them. My cousin's high school was nearby. He was 15 at the time. He gives me a buzz. He's like, Roos, I heard you got remote control helicopters. I'm like, yeah. He's like, can I come down with mates and play with them? Sure, mate, come down. He brings his mates down at lunchtime and they're playing with the remote control helicopters. All of a sudden, we've got a swarm of people around the helicopter uh, stand I had at the shopping center. Bam, 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 transactions left, right and center. Selling like hotcakes. Then my cousin has to go back to school. He leaves, sales die down again, no one else there. I call him up that evening and I'm like, mate, can I give you 50 bucks a day to come in every day with your mates and play with the helicopters? 15 year old kid's dream. I was like, sure. He starts coming in every single day with his mates for the full days on the weekends, playing with the remote control helicopters, massive swarm of people around the stand, everybody's fighting one another to have a look at these helicopters and to buy them. 
By December 10th, I was sold out. For two most expensive weeks of the lease, I had nothing to sell. I wasn't even there, I had no product to push, just left it there. So it just shows the power of social proof. Have you ever been at a shopping centre and seen a crowd and there, you know, people are fighting one another so you go in to like have a look and you nudge and you push through and have a look and it's some American guy cleaning a piece of carpet and look how easy it is, these stains, coffee stains, Red Bull, red wine, look how easy it washes out. People will fight one another to watch a piece of carpet being cleaned. That is the power of social proof. I'll finish today with the best bit of business advice I've ever received. So, a lot of people come to me with business ideas all the time. I try and make as much time as possible to have a coffee to hear out their ideas. And look, the fact of the matter is 99% of the time their idea is shit. You know, if your idea is based on creating a niche market for another successful business, like, forget about it. You know, oh, it's like a Groupon, but for left-handed golfers. <laughs> Fuck. Ninety-nine percent of the time, the idea is shit. But every now and then, someone has an awesome idea. And I evaluate a business based on three key things. What is your competitive advantage? This is what will set you apart from your competition. What is your value add to the consumer? This is what drives somebody to transact with you. And the last one is, does everyone think you're crazy? Because that means you're challenging the status quo enough to make this a successful business. You're different to everything else that's out there. There is gonna be reason for people to talk about your idea. If you're a yes, yes, yes to all of those three things and you can answer them, I think it's an awesome idea. And I do tell that person, great idea that would make an awesome business, you know, kick ass with it. I'll see that person six months later and I'll say, hey mate, How's business? They look at me and they're like, uh, what business? Like, remember I took time out of my day to meet with you because you emailed me 12 times and I finally said yes and I met up with you and we had a coffee, you shared your business idea. I said, it's an awesome idea. What happened with that since? It was like, oh yeah, yeah, I was just conceptualizing, blah, 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 whatever. Talk is cheap. There's a lot of people who just discuss these ideas. The athlete bit of entrepreneurship is the hardest. And in line with the athlete bit of working your ass off to make it happen of entrepreneurship, the best business advice ever has been printed on Nike t-shirts for years. Just do it. Thank you. Questions?